Open world games have a nasty tendency to throw a whole lot at players and hope they're distracted enough with all the carrots and sticks that they end up sinking hundreds of hours into a game. Biomutant is no different. The only catch is you have us. Hey there, friends, it's Kodiak here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming, and today we're sharing all the tips, all the tricks, and everything we wish we knew sooner going into Experiment 101's brand new open world RPG, Biomutant. Now, just to put our cards on the table, Livid and myself have played this game a lot. A huge shout out to the developers Experiment 101 and the publishers THQ Nordic for giving us early access to this game because honestly, we would never had this much time to really enjoy a title and make content for you all. That being said, with about 120 hours collectively under our belts, it's safe to say we've picked up a thing or two along the way. Hopefully you guys learned something, and if you do, we'd love your support on the video. You know what to do, drop a like and consider subscribing. And with that out of the way, let's dive in. There's no doubt that the beginning sequence in the game is a bit long-winded, but there is one very important early moment that we think you guys need to know about. You'll learn how to craft from Gizmo, one of the NPCs you'll meet later on in your adventures. He'll give you a few materials, and with that, a few opportunities to craft your very first weapon. Now this is eventually going to be important, and I don't want to spoil anything, but pay attention to the weapon that you design. Make something fun, make something quirky, or make something that you're interested in, because it does eventually wrap around. Now I don't want to spoil the surprise, but just know that there's no serious gameplay implications here. It's just a fun tie-in that you'll experience later on in your adventures. With the basics under your belt, you'll start to experience combat within the game. And early on, just like most open world RPGs, the combat can be a bit intense and you'll find yourself needing to heal quite often. You've probably experienced the radial wheel system that controls consumables and changing weapons within the game. But did you know that you have to manually assign some healing items to be in that radial wheel? Sure, there is an automatic component to some of it, but if you're like me and got bad luck, you thought you only had energy items because your radial wheel was full of them. I went through a good chunk of my progression not knowing that I could change out the consumables on that radial wheel. What I saw was what I thought I had, and that's not the truth. You can go into your inventory and reassign consumables, just like you do with weapons, and that means healing items, energy items, any consumables that you want. It's a silly tip, I know, and for most it may be common sense, but I guarantee you there are a few players out there that will benefit from this information. During your playthrough, you're gonna see a lot of quests come flying at you, but there is one very important quest that I implore you not to miss and not to skip. It's all about upgrading your automaton. You may be wondering how you get the glider, how you get the automaton upgrades, and I'm gonna tell you. During your playthrough, you'll encounter an NPC called Mirage. He's a big looking character that you meet at the beginning of the game, but you probably forgot about him. Do not ignore this character. Interact with him to get a quest and enter a memory. Once you complete the memory and you can succeed or fail, you can upgrade your automaton. There are four upgrades in total. The glider, the damage stim, the healing stim, and the turret. Now the glider and the stims are the most valuable, but I know a lot of players will want to go for the turret, and I promise you, it's not that great. The thing is, once you do the first Mirage encounter, he'll randomly just show up when you're playing through the game. Do not ignore him, because every time you interact and do a new memory, you get another automaton upgrade. These are essential upgrades, and outside of armor and weapons, this is a top priority and something you do not want to skip. Eventually, you will get that healing stim upgrade, and it's important to know that this is one of the most valuable consumables in the game, restoring 50% of your health. But there is a catch. The healing stim runs out of charges and needs to be refreshed. Now, the only way that we've found to do this is to rest at a campfire. These campfires are scattered across the world, but sadly, they're hard to find and even harder to get back to because there's no way to clearly mark them on a map. Our best advice is to find one close to a fast travel point and then just remember that one particular one. Because it's not that hard to fast travel around the world, all you really need to do is commit one or two of the fireplace locations to memory. Truth be told, Livid and myself both didn't realize that the stim needed to be recharged. We were very confused as to why it wasn't working, which is why we're sharing this tip with you, so hopefully you can avoid the hassle. 
Let's change gears and talk about combat, specifically the ultimate combat mode in the game, Super Wong Fu. We've watched a lot of streamers and content creators play the game and not even access this mode, and we think it's important enough that we have to share it with everyone. To access Super Wong Fu, you have to string together three combinations of moves. Now these combinations are weapon specific and you do have to unlock them using the upgrade points. These are influenced by fighting games where you'll have to input a certain sequence of button presses before you can access the special move, but trust us, they're all very easy to manage, even for the most casual of players. Those comic words on the screen, those are the indicators that you pulled off a special move. Now the kicker is that you have to complete three of these combinations within a certain amount of time and you can never repeat two of the combinations within sequence. Ability A can't be followed by another Ability A, but you can go Ability A, Ability B, then back to Ability A. You could also go Ability A, Ability B, and Ability C. There are a number of special attacks within the game, just remember you have to unlock them per weapon. Once you do unlock Super Wong Fu, you have access to four different abilities, a supercharged melee, a supercharged ranged, a supercharged incapacitate, and a supercharged jump slam. They're all okay, and we do recommend that you try out all of them to see what fits your playstyle. This is one of those essential systems that will make your progression in the game that much easier. Sure, you could ignore it and never tap into Super Wong Fu, but why would you want to do that? It's a great system that elevates your gameplay and helps you get through combat that much faster. One thing people are really looking forward to in Biomutant is the Tribe War substory within the game. You can align yourself with a dark or light tribe, but did you know that each tribe has a tribe weapon and tribe armor? Weapons are obtained by defeating each of the tribe's leader or fulfilling that tribe's goal if you are part of that tribe. The armor is only obtained by the tribe you're aligned with. Now to unlock every armor set, you'll need to swap tribes, and that can be confusing and difficult, or you can work through the tribes in New Game Plus. The tribe weapons are unique and offer a different type of combat gameplay, and we think they're definitely worth checking out. I will also say, after falling into this trap myself, do not end the tribe war early. This will prevent you from getting all of the tribe weapons. You get the option relatively early to pacify the map, but if you do that, you don't actually get the rewards. You can even go to the forts and look at the tribe weapons, but they will be unobtainable. For most players, this is going to be a huge bummer, but now hopefully you won't fall into the same trap that I did, and you'll be able to obtain all of the six tribe weapons within the game. When it comes to RPGs, everybody wants to talk about stats, and we think that the most valuable stat in the game is actually luck. This is going to increase your crit chance and your loot value chance. By dedicating just a few points into the luck tree, you're going to go from finding common items to legendary items, and that has a direct impact on combat and progression because both are increasing as you increase that luck statistic. We're not saying that the other stats aren't valuable, but when you find yourself at a comfortable place with your other stats, we highly suggest investing in luck. The higher the luck, the higher the rarity, and that means better items which are gonna push your combat, push your gameplay to that next level. Now, since we are dedicating so much attention to luck, you may be wondering, are there other ways to increase my stats besides leveling up? And the answer is yes. You can find treadmills, dumbbells, and bench presses all around the world, and these will increase your strength and agility respectively. Chances are you probably already have these quests in your inventory if you're picking up everything as you progress in the game. You just have to dedicate the time to track the quest and go execute. Each of the events are simple and don't require a lot of brain power, so go out, get them done, and take advantage of some free stats. In the same vein of stats, let's talk about skill points. Besides leveling up, bandit camps are the only way to get skill points in the game. Once you clear out a camp, you'll go into a back room and there will be a codex. These are invaluable to giving you that extra point on top of leveling up and can completely change the power dynamic in the game. Perks can often increase your damage or defense capabilities by significant margins, and having those extra points is invaluable. There are a handful of bandit camps around the world, and that means a handful of codexes up for grabs. The perks in the game are powerful, and having some extra points in your back pocket definitely won't hurt. When it comes to open world RPGs, everybody wants to know, where is the loot? Yes, we've talked about luck and scoring some legendary items, but when it comes to the ultimate loot in the game, 
It's all about the Old World Bunkers. There are less than 10 of these in the game, and most times they're filled with enemies and are accompanied by an extreme weather condition, which means you need resistances to survive. With the right gear, you can go in and take on the mini boss that's guarding a key. That key is essential to opening up the bunker and getting that ultimate loot. Not every bunker has a locker, but most do, and we'll be covering all of the ones that have ultimate weapons in future videos. If you are looking to get a jump on these, make sure you talk to Moog in the dead zone. He'll kickstart this quest, tell you everything you need to know about the old world bunkers, and even give you some loot along the way. This is one of our favorite activities to do in the game because it usually ended with an ultimate weapon, and there is no better experience than getting a legendary and taking on your enemies with a new, supercharged item. Since we're talking about ultimate weapons, let's talk quickly about crafting. You may want to make your own legendary weapon, and that's no problem. In each town is a balloon with an upgrade bench for weapons and armor. Now, unfortunately for me, I didn't realize this until about 30 hours into the game. I hadn't seen any footage of it previously, which means I had no idea it was there. The narrator should prompt you and say, hey, check out that balloon. I bet there's an upgrade bench up there. But for me, it never happened. And I never thought to climb in there and see what it was all about. I thought it was just a marker to let me know, hey, there's a town here. Upgrade benches are great. They require materials and allow you to upgrade the quality and material of your armor and weapons. Sadly, there is no transmog system in the game, but you can use the upgrade bench to bring some of your favorite items in line with your progression. And yes, we realize that it's not a perfect solution, but it'll allow you to look the part and perform well in combat. Changing gears again, let's talk about abilities, but not in a combat sense, in a utility sense. While you're out exploring the world, you'll often find that Lou is just a bit out of reach. In that case, don't sleep on the mushroom ability, as it's key to reaching loot tucked on second floors and in hard to reach areas. This ability allows you to get over or around things and is incredible, and since it's pretty much always available, it's one of the best utilities in the game. You don't need to use it for combat necessarily, but when it comes to exploring and getting to hard to reach places, it's essential. We talked briefly about extreme zones when diving into the old world bunkers. These are incredibly deadly, especially during the early parts of the game where you don't have a lot of resistance gear. Obviously, you want to keep a lookout for any gear that adds resistance values and build out different outfits that will allow you to take on the various extreme zones in the game. If you didn't already know this, there are ping dish quests that lead you to ultimate resistance sets, which you can use to completely negate an extreme zone. However, if you don't have that gear yet and you do get caught in an extreme zone, you can fast travel out to save yourself. Just know that you can't fast travel underground or while mounted, so be careful. We know that a lot of you are going to jump into Biomuin and immediately want to tame mounts, and we wanted to make sure that everyone knew how to do that. There are a decent number of mounts in the game, scattered across the entire world. Step one is to find the mounts. Mounts are region-based, so if you find a mount in one zone, it's most likely the only one in that zone. Step two is to find a pip plant. They look like big bushes, and when you slide under them, you actually pick up the pip corresponding with a certain mount. Once you have the right pip, go back to the corresponding mount, feed it to it, and tame it. Pips, just like the mounts, are region-based, so you never have to go too far to tame the mount that you want. You should also know that some mounts can be bought from outposts and towns, and some mounts are not tameable and can only be bought with in-game currency. Since we're talking about mounts, let's talk about vehicles. As you unlock story vehicles, you can also upgrade them. The Mechton and Goo Glide can both be upgraded visually and with slightly improved stats, sometimes opening new traversal options, such as a Tier 2 engine being needed for the Goo Glide to move into the green, algae-covered water. When piloting them, hold down the mount key. For PC players, it's the 4 key, and an inventory window will pop up that will allow you to customize the mount with the various pieces that you've salvaged. For the most part, this is cosmetic, but there are some small gameplay implications, which is why you need to know about it. Finally, let's talk about making money or green. One of the best ways to make green in the game is by selling pearls. If you run along the coast in the bottom right zone, the Surfapelagos, look out for clams. Each pearl sells for a minimum of 500 leafs or a couple thousands depending on the vendor. 
you always want to sell high, even if that takes a little trial and error to find the right vendor. This method is easily the best way to make money in the game, and because there are plenty of pearls in the Surf Pelagos, I have no doubt that players will be able to cash in on this incredibly lucrative trick. So there you have it, friends, everything I wish I knew sooner about Biomutant. The game throws a lot at you, and I'm sure we've missed something, so if you'd like to share your best tips or tricks, feel free to leave a comment down below. We're all about building up the community and helping people tackle the games they love, so share your thoughts and help out other members of the Legacy family. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider joining us on Discord. We've got a great community of nearly 7,000 members spread across dozens of great games, with a special section dedicated just for Biomutant, so if you're interested, check out the description below and look for the link. Finally, if you like our channel and want to support Legacy Gaming even more, you can now do that by becoming a member. For the cost of a cup of coffee, you're helping evolve the channel and take our community to that next level. Look for the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.